The number one enemy in software development is complexity. But what exactly is complexity and what drives it? Most developers first think of cyclomatic complexity, but there is much more to it. Let's break it down. If we look at the definition of the word complex, we learn that it means something is composed of two or more parts and that it is hard to separate, analyze or solve. This definition sounds intuitively reasonable, but it's too vague for software development. Different stakeholders interpret complexity differently, which leads to misunderstandings, measurement challenges and ineffective countermeasures. So we need to be much more specific. To start with, I find it important to classify complexity by three major origins. Essential complexity is inherent to the nature of the problem or its environment. It cannot be reduced without changing the problem itself. An example would be a global tax system that must account for thousands of tax rules making complexity unavoidable. Accidental complexity comes from human decisions during design, implementation or project setup. It can often be avoided by choosing better approaches, techniques or methods. Typical examples include over-engineered designs and workarounds in code. Incidental complexity accumulates over time as software, projects or organizations evolve. Unlike accidental complexity, initially reasonable decisions such as design choices or team structures, can turn into technical or organizational debt. Incidental complexity can be reduced by continuously refactoring technical debt and adapting processes and organizational structures. Examples include outdated architectural patterns that no longer fit requirements and rigid team structures that hinder scaling. Following a structured approach, I have clustered all types of complexity into five categories. Code and Structural describes complexities in source code and design local to a module. System and Architectural describes complexities in the overall architecture affecting multiple modules. Software Lifecycle describes complexities in the project independent of the structure of the software. Business and Organizational describes complexities independent from the software and technology itself. Environment describes complexities given by the environment in which the organization operates. These clusters will be represented using these icons. With the overall structure defined, let's start with the first and probably most well-known type of complexity, cyclomatic complexity, which describes how many independent execution paths exist in a function or module. A typical example of high cyclomatic complexity would be a function parsing a custom text format with many conditions to handle various cases. Drivers of cyclomatic complexity include the number of if-then conditions, and the number of logical operators like AND and OR in conditions. But even if a function doesn't have many execution paths, it can still be hard to understand. That brings us to cognitive complexity, which describes how difficult it is for a developer to read, understand and reason about the code. An example would be a code base where some functions return an empty string for missing values, others return null and some throw an exception. Drivers of cognitive complexity include naming inconsistencies in the codebase and with the domain, missing or inappropriate abstractions requiring knowledge about low-level details, implicit knowledge and dependencies like relying on a global state or order of execution, and design erosion and architectural drift like bypassing architectural guidelines and best practices. Confusing logic isn't the only problem. How code is structured also plays a major role. That leads us to structural code complexity, which describes how purely the code is structured into functions and modules. An example would be a user service that handles authentication, registration and email validation instead of separating concerns. Drivers of structural code complexity include number of responsibilities per module, depth of inheritance hierarchies and unnecessary abstraction layers. Beyond structure, some problems are just difficult to solve efficiently. That's where algorithmic complexity comes in, which describes how difficult it is to implement an algorithm efficiently in terms of time, space and correctness. An example would be finding the best route in a delivery app. Drivers of algorithmic complexity include required computational efficiency, volume of data that must be handled and number of steps in the algorithm. Even with an efficient algorithm, working with complex data structures can introduce its own challenges. That's data complexity, which describes how difficult it is to accurately model data relationships while minimizing redundancy. An example would be a climate model 
that tracks relationships between vast amounts of data points such as temperature records, CO2 levels, volcanic activity and solar radiation. Drivers of data complexity include number of relationships per entity, overall density of relationships across the schema and schema evolution over time. But complexity doesn't just come from code. The technologies we choose also have a big impact. Let's talk about technology stack complexity, which describes how many technologies, frameworks and tools must be maintained. An example would be using .NET Framework for some parts of the system and .NET 8 for others. Drivers of technology stack complexity include number of different technologies and frameworks involved, number and age of outdated technologies, and the number of custom-built solutions instead of off-the-shelf alternatives. Over time, systems evolve and different architectural styles start to mix. That brings us to architectural evolution complexity, which describes how architectural inconsistencies increase cognitive load. An example would be a code base where older parts of the system use strict layout architecture, while newer features are built using domain-centric architectures. Drivers of architecture evolution complexity include number of coexisting architectural paradigms, the degree to which legacy code still needs to be maintained, and the amount of specific knowledge needed to understand the different paradigms. And when an architecture isn't well structured, we end up with tightly coupled components. This is structural system complexity, which describes how tightly coupled and weakly cohesive components and services are within the system. An example would be when the functionality of a single feature is spread across the database layer, the business logic layer and the presentation layer. Drivers of structural system complexity include the lack of clear architectural boundaries leading to scattered responsibilities, the overall dependency density across components and services, and the amount of scattered cross-cutting concerns. Another major challenge in large systems is managing state correctly. That's where state complexity comes in, which describes how difficult it is to manage and update mutable state while ensuring consistency. An example would be the removal of an item from a card, which triggers stock updates, discount recalculations, and reapplying promotions based on the new card conditions. Drivers of state complexity include the degree of interdependence between different states, the level of consistency guarantees required, and the amount of data redundancy across the system. And when multiple processes interact with shared state, things get even harder. This leads us to concurrency complexity, which describes how difficult it is to manage concurrent activities while maintaining deterministic behavior. An example would be a system that behaves differently depending on whether event A arrives before or after event B. Drivers of concurrency complexity include the number of parallel executions competing for shared resources, the degree of interdependence between concurrent tasks, and the reliance on implicit execution order rather than explicitly modeling causal dependencies. Beyond code execution, configuration settings can introduce unexpected complexity. That brings us to Configuration complexity, which describes how system behavior changes due to configuration settings and feature toggles. An example would be when a feature toggle introduced for A-B testing causes unforeseen side effects on other components. Drivers of configuration complexity include number of configuration options and feature toggles affecting system behavior and the degree of interdependence between different configuration options or feature toggles. Even before a system runs, Complexity starts during development. That's development complexity, which describes how difficult it is for a developer to contribute new functionality to the project. An example would be a new developer which needs weeks to ramp up before making a simple change. Drivers of development complexity include the amount of required knowledge beyond just the feature itself, the development process overhead involved, and the effort needed to integrate a change. And once development is done, Verifying that everything works correctly is its own challenge. That brings us to testing complexity, which describes how difficult it is to efficiently and reliably test the software. An example would be when testing a single feature always requires setting up the entire system. Drivers of testing complexity include the degree of insufficient design for testability, the effort needed to set up the test environment, and the combinatorial test case grows from variability of the subject under test. Even after testing, 
Running the software in production comes with its own set of challenges. That's operational complexity, which describes how difficult it is to operate the software in production. An example would be when a critical production issue occurs, but the logs are distributed across multiple microservices with no correlation IDs. Drivers of operational complexity include the amount of manual procedures for deployment and upgrades, and low observability and monitoring. And keeping software running over time, fixing issues and making updates is what we call maintenance complexity, which describes how much effort is required to investigate, diagnose and safely fix issues. An example would be a developer which needs deep system knowledge to fix a simple bug while ensuring nothing else breaks. Drivers of maintenance complexity include low automated test coverage, low quality of documentation and the amount of accumulated technical debt. But software doesn't exist in a vacuum. The complexity of the real-world problem we are solving also plays a big role. That brings us to domain complexity, which describes how complex the real-world problem is the software is trying to solve. An example would be a tax service that must account for different rules per country, state and city. Drivers of domain complexity include the number of business rules, their variability and special cases, the number of interconnected domain concepts required to implement one feature, and the amount of specialized domain knowledge required. Even within the same domain, companies decide which parts to support in their products, introducing product portfolio complexity, which describes how many product families and variations exist. An example would be a company selling five product variants, each with slightly different features, pricing and legal requirements per country. Drivers of product portfolio complexity include the number of product families with distinct functionality and the number of feature variations per product. But before we can build anything, we need clear requirements. When that's not the case, we get requirement complexity, which describes how the definition, structure and evolution of requirements impact complexity. An example would be a reporting feature initially specified for a small user base must now handle millions of records in real time. Drivers of requirement complexity include ambiguous, incomplete and conflicting requirements, lack of clear conceptual abstractions in requirements, the number of interconnected features and scenarios and changing the scope of requirements. And beyond the software itself, the way teams and companies are structured can create additional challenges. That's organizational complexity, which describes the impact of team structure, distribution and dynamics on collaboration and coordination. An example would be a project where the backend team, the frontend team and the product managers are all located in different countries and different time zones. Drivers of organizational complexity include the number of teams and suppliers involved, the frequency of reorganizations, role shifts and ownership changes, the number of concurrent projects requiring frequent context switches and the geographic distribution of teams. Finally, software doesn't run in isolation. It relies on hardware, which comes with its own set of constraints. That's hardware complexity, which describes how hardware constraints impact software design. An example would be a mobile app, which needs to run on a cheap Android phone with 2 GB RAM, limiting UI responsiveness and requiring careful memory management. Drivers of hardware complexity include limited CPU, RAM or storage, hardware-specific behavior due to different CPU architectures, instruction sets or hardware acceleration, unreliable hardware constraints like thermal constraints, battery limits or sensor inaccuracies, and variable network conditions like bandwidth, latency and outages. And in many industries, software must also meet strict legal and regulatory requirements. That's regulatory and compliance complexity, which describes how legal, industry and security regulations impose constraints on the software design. An example would be a SaaS product that must automatically delete user data after six months per GDPR while retaining logs for legal and auditing purposes. Drivers of regulatory and compliance complexity include the number of regulatory standards and compliance constraints, the number of industry certification and auditing requirements, the frequency of changes of regulatory requirements, and mandated multi-vendor collaboration to prevent monopolization of knowledge and technology. Now, why does this all matter? First, communication. 
When discussing complexity in software development, it's crucial to be clear about which complexity we mean, especially when talking to different stakeholders. The word complexity alone is just too vague. Different people may have different aspects in mind, and non-technical stakeholders often mistake complexity for technical debt, assuming it's purely a result of pure engineering decisions. I hope this breakdown brings more clarity, structure and precision in these discussions. For me, it already has. Second, measurement. Understanding the different drivers of complexity allows us to make better decisions on what to measure. And only what we measure can be effectively improved. Complexity is rarely neatly categorized. Boundaries are often fluid. Still, I have tried to provide the most complete overview possible. If you think something is missing, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss upcoming discussions on measuring different types of complexity and strategies to mitigate and reduce them.